welcome to Dog's Breakfast. I'm Nido, and today we have Anthony Konechny. He is an actor who credits both his relentless work ethic to his training and his charming bad boy sex appeal for lending to his ever-growing career. You can stalk, I mean see, Anthony in such television shows such as Supernatural, Motive, The Tomorrow People, Almost Human, and upcoming films include Godzilla and Fifty Shades of Grey. Welcome! Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> you bet. Um, first off, what made you decide to add a competitive bodybuilder to your curriculum of life? Um, okay, yeah, you know what, actually it started off, um, I was really big into fitness, um, you know, always going to the gym, I always love staying in shape and eating healthy. Um, um, actually, my girlfriend, who uh, got into it with me, she did a bikini competition, same competition, and um, uh, we just we wanted to take things to the next level, and we both kind of had higher dreams, um, and so we got in touch with a trainer who competes at the international level, and he kind of set us up, and like, hey, listen, I think you guys should do a show, and so we did it, and it, it, it just, when you consider yourself a competitor, it raises the standards of what you think about yourself. Um, so, you know, in terms of doing all this crazy dieting, this crazy cardio twice a day, plus weights, and all these kind of crazy things, it gives you the freedom to kind of say, well, I'm a competitor, I, that's what we do, you know? <laughs> and, 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 and it just, it kind of changes the way you think. And, yeah, it, it opens up so many doors, you know? Versus like, you know, someone who does a crazy painting, well, I'm a painter, I can do that, you know? It just kind of, you change your identity about yourself. Um, I mean, I don't know how, how, how far I'm going to pursue it. Um, uh, my last show, I ended up, I came in first place. Um, so I was able to come, uh, make it to BC's, which is the next level. Um, I don't know how far I'm going to pursue it, whether I want to go get some sponsorships or anything like that, but it's just... It, it, it definitely changed my identity, you know, considering myself a competitor. I've got that competitive edge. Yeah, and you have like the camaraderie of your girlfriend to be doing it together. Yeah, we well, do it together. Right? Like our diet is, is super freaking crazy. Um, you know, we do food, food prep every three days and like we have set meals. It's very cookie cutter. I would um, hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's not for everyone, for sure, you know. No, no. Yeah. It, and it was super crazy. Like I hit a point where before my show, um, like I was literally, I needed, I needed to do my second set of cardio. I was on, I basically, I got up at 5 a.m., I ran for an hour, went, went to set all day, um, ended up going to the gym, did my weight session, and the gym ended up kicking me out, and then it, I had another, had, had to get my last meal in, and then I knocked on my parents' door as a treadmill at 1 o'clock in the morning saying, Mom, I gotta get my cardio in. <laughs> and, and that was it, and I did that, you know, for the last three, four weeks, and then then you get results. <laughs> it's not crazy at all, really. <laughs> Um, so as an actor and a young man, you know, you definitely go through transformations of self. So what are some ways that, you know, how do you guarantee that your passport of integrity gets stamped every time? Like, how do you stay true to yourself mm. with all of that? Hmm. That's a tough one. I mean, there's all... It's meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be easy. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a lot of peaks and valleys. Um, my biggest thing, and I literally, I mean, I wish I could take a picture of my room and my bedroom. I've made it, my, it's not like it's not a bedroom anymore. It's like my workspace. Um, I'm filled with motivational quotes. Um, I have like, you know, dream boards and, you know, pictures and stuff that, that keeps me going. Um, the greatest thing lately, the, 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 you know, it's, it's that I work is, you know, keep moving forward. 
and I rely a lot on momentum. Um, once the ball's rolling, you know, you just got to give it a couple extra pushes to keep it rolling. Uh, the moment you let it stop, you know, it's like you know, it's like that big ass ball of, that that's uh, you're trying to build that big ass snowman, and you're you're pushing it in the snow. As soon as you got that thing going, it's a lot easier, right? Um, but when you have to stop, or you have to change the directions, it's um, it gets a lot more difficult. Um, so yeah, just keep moving forward, keep your momentum going. Chip cookie slash pretzel. Which one? Oh, there's three. Oh, there's three. Oh, I thought it was like an ice cream chocolate. <laughs> That's, That's too easy. Things. No way. So ice cream. Ice cream, chocolate chip cookie, or pretzel. Oh, uh, chocolate chip cookie, fresh out of the oven. Nice. For sure. Does mom make that? Um, uh, no, no, no. It should be like a fresh. Subway's got some really good chocolate. Chip <laughs> you know what? I do like. I can't have chocolate, so white chocolate. That's the winner for me. White chocolate macadamia. Yes. Though. Yes. That was one of the options. I know, I know, it's true. I'm throwing you under now. Okay, Moonwalk, Gangnam Style, or the Harlem Shake? The Shake, for sure. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I might make you sample that later. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> no, you're just asking me which one I like. Yeah, fair enough. Style. Okay, okay. Wayne's World, Dude, Where's My Car, or Harold and Kumar? Ooh, Wayne's World, Dude, Where's My Car. I know, right? A lot of, a lot of bro movies. Uh, I'm going to lean towards Wayne's World on this one. Nice. Yes. It's a good one. It's, it's classic. Good. I know. I love it. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you have, a, you have a great uh, sense of humor. I like it. So, um, how do you, how do you like, make adjustments and, and get into the mindset of, like, of an emotionless uh, android that you play an almost human? Mm. You know what? Actually, like... It, there's a part of it's like, wow, you don't really have to do any work, you know, you just gotta not really do anything, right? <laughs> but it's actually the, the exact opposite of all the actor training, everything that, like, my instincts, um, you know, you're get, getting the words, and you cannot have anything, you cannot show anything. So, like, your own, you know, you say your own natural talent that wants to start creeping out, you cannot do that. Like, you gotta, <laughs> like, I, I had, like, there was a line before, and you get caught up, because... There's another character, um, which is a DRN, uh, played by Michael Ely. Um, he's allowed to have some more emotion, and so our character, the MX-43s, um, it's very, you know, very, you know, nothing. And you really gotta, like, you really gotta, you know, take that all out. And I've had a director say, more, more robotic, you know, more, <laughs> more robotic, right? And, and it's, it's actually kind of, it's, a, it's tricky, because you can't be human. And your natural instincts, you have to snuff them. Um, which is, which is actually quite interesting. It became a bit of a challenging, you know, just getting in, working on that character. So, yeah, I'll say that. Well, yeah, that, that <laughs> sounds tough. I mean, like, a, yeah. yeah, you'd have to shut down everything that naturally comes to you. Mm -hmm. And say everything without any emotion. Creepy. Okay, now that we're on the subject of the MX-43, the, um, we're gonna we're gonna show a picture, and it's you know you probably know what picture we're gonna show. It's the one that people have been comparing you to the Ken doll. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now there's been a bit of controversy over the picture, and so I want to ask you if there's something that you can add to the to an Android, what would it be? Like if you could design your own Android with the MX43 as your base, what would you add? Just one thing though. Like a feature. Yeah. I mean. 
the main thing that I, I would love, um, if you, if those of you who've watched the show, um, there's a little vial that you can get, which is a synthetic soul. And I always thought it would be fantastic for one of us to be injected with a synthetic soul and see what that would happen. Because the MX-43 is designed, um, um, the technology is just, it's a powerhouse. Um, so you put that little bit in there, I always thought, you know, what, what, would, what would it be like? <laughs> Can you pick your soul or? Uh, I, I don't know if you'd be able to pick your soul. I don't know. That's a tough one. It could be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I have that little more respect around the around the yard, I think. <laughs> You're really ready. seriously thinking about that? Oh my oh, no, goodness! No, no, another one is we, we do get we get picked on quite a bit. Um, I don't know if you've seen all the episodes, but we get shot in the face. I was gonna say, not only do you get shot, but it's in the face. In the face. It looks personal. In the face. <laughs> okay, now uh, moving on. Uh, in Fifty Shades of Grey, mm -hmm. uh, how does it feel to play the rival? It, it was actually it was really cool and. Uh, uh, Jamie Dornan was, he literally was, because we had this scene where, um, you know, I can't say too much. Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm not spoiling this. Um, well, those of you who've read the book, there's this, I got a little sneak peek. Um, there's this <laughs> glare that he gives me, and he's got the eyes, he's got he's got it all, and, you know, you prep for it, you, you read the story, you get everything, and you kind of expect it. It wasn't until he gave it to me, and I'm <gasps> <laughs> and everything was all natural from there. Like he just, it just kind of clicked in, and he, he he's done his work. He's got it going on. Um, but I say it was, it was quite interesting. It was a very cool to play. Yeah. Yeah, because you always tend to play like you know the good guy or you know the you know the robot's kind of a hero in the yeah. sense you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was <laughs> quite interesting. Yeah, I mean it's always great to be, play something different. Now, mm -hmm. last question. Okay. Now, who is your all-time favorite Muppet? Now, before you answer, yeah. this includes like all of Jim Henson's uh, world of Muppets. So it includes Sesame Street, Fraggle <sighs> Rock, as well as the original <gasps> Muppet. Oh, oh, oh I, I hit something, I hit something. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, Muppet. Now, okay, I used... I used to have one. Okay. <laughs> there was a show on TV. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is clues. It's a handheld puppet. I don't know if it's a Muppet. I'm not even going to say it because it's kind of. Uh, I've already. Uh, okay. I used, to, you're, you're I used to have this handheld thing um, from Lamb Chops Play Along. His name was Sammy the Lammy. Um, I mean, that was obviously my all time favorite puppet because I grew up with sleeping with him and cuddling with him. Um, uh, would you would you be Sammy the Lammy? Would I be Sammy the Lammy? I cr I could be Sammy. The Lammy. <laughs> Other than that, okay. If, we, if we're gonna stick to you know Muppets, strictly Muppets. So this includes Sesame Street. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm Big Bird for sure. Big Bird. Big Bird. Yeah. Is that because you're can meet him eye to eye? Yeah, we'll say that. Yeah. He, yeah, he was the shit. He was the coolest <laughs> guy. He had it going on. He was the boss. It's true. Yeah, yeah. He is. Everyone loves Big Bird. Yeah. Nobody's got issues with Big Bird, you know? So. <laughs> mm. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming down, Anthony. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, Bison!
Dog's Breakfast, person of the hours, Mr. Cesar Chavez. I'm Gabriel Carter. This is Nito, and we'll see you around the bend.